Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Francisco, a specialist nephrologist and transplant immunologist working at Francisco Kinnear Medical Center in Singapore. Welcome to the Kidney Health and Disease video series. Today is the time for the eighth video of the series that will be replacing kidney function through kidney transplantation. We're going to talk about what is a kidney transplant, what are the types of kidney transplant, some brief notes on immunosuppression, what are the potential complications, but importantly, what are the benefits of kidney transplantation over dialysis, and my own perspective on why you should be open to donate a kidney or to accept kidney donation if offered. So let's talk about what is a kidney transplant. The kidney transplant is a procedure by which a patient with kidney failure receives a donor kidney to replace the functions that his or her own kidneys can no longer do. It is done surgically by removing the kidney of a healthy individual and putting it inside the pelvis of the recipient with kidney failure. The renal artery will be connected to a major artery, the renal vein will be connected to a major vein, and the ureter will be connected into the bladder of the patient. So what are the types of kidney transplant? There are many classifications, but let's talk about the most important ones. The transplant can be done preemptively, that means before starting dialysis or after starting dialysis. It is important to make this distinction because those patients that had the kidney transplant performed before certain dialysis do not experience the side effects of dialysis. In addition, they are not exposed to long periods of high levels of toxins and patients that went through the dialysis process. Therefore, the outcomes are much better compared to those patients that had the transplant performed after dialysis. However, those patients that received the kidney transplant in the first six months post initiation of dialysis have similar outcomes to those receiving a preemptive transplant. The transplant can also come from a living or a deceased donor. It is very obvious that the a living donor is someone that is alive and this is donor someone has died. But it's important to make this distinction as well because typically patients receiving a kidney transplant from a live donor do much better than patients receiving from a deceased donor because the kidney comes from a healthy individual in this case and the surgery can be done immediately after removing the kidney. On the contrary, someone receiving a kidney from a deceased donor Typically, the organ derives from someone that probably died of uh, illness and the kidney might not be healthy enough. In addition, while finding the correct or more suitable donor uh, recipient for that donor, it will take a few hours that the kidney has to be placed on ice or in a solution to prevent decay, but still there is some degree of decay of the organ. In addition, the kidney uh, the kidney transplant can be divided as a living related or unrelated. Related, for example, your brother, unrelated could be a friend. Genetically related, also someone from your family, or emotionally related, for example, your spouse. Can be also classified as low or high risk for rejection, although this is very simplistic classification because there, there, may, there might be many degrees of risk. For example, someone Genetically related, it's most likely to be of low risk than, than someone very distant uh, from you. But finally, it's important to mention about altruistic and non-altruistic kidney transplantation. Altruistic is someone that has donated the kidney out of love or care. Non-altruistic is someone that has been probably coerced either psychologically, physically, or financially to donate the kidney. And it's important that we favor altruistic transplantations because uh, it is done legally. Uh, there will be always um, the bond between the donor and recipient and they will, they will take care of each other. However, the, typically the donors that uh, uh, donate the kidney non-altruistically are forgotten and they might develop a disease in the future and they will know because no one is following them up and there are risk of kidney failure or other complications in the future. But in addition, the recipients also might receive a second-hand kidney or um, 
they are at risk of receiving an infection like hepatitis or HIV. So the best kidney transplant is the one that is done preemptively with proper planning from a living related donor if possible and hoping that is of low risk for rejection. So let's talk a little bit about the immunosuppression that we give to kidney transplant patients. There are two main types. One is called induction and one is called maintenance. The induction consists of antibodies that are given at the time of the transplant surgery to act fast on the immune system and to minimize the risk or fast or early rejection. But the patient will need a combination of medications, typically pills, to maintain the immune system uh, quiet and preventing bursts of rejection in the future. This maintenance immune suppression typically consists of different types of medications. Indeed, kidney transplant patients are free of dialysis, but still need to take these medications, attend frequent appointments, and they need kind of taken quite religiously uh, in order to prevent the risk for rejection. We're, going, we're not going to discuss the details of these is drugs, but typically patients on, on kidney transplant receive a set of three types of drugs to prevent rejection. Typically receive one of the drugs on the top that act on T cells, that is the, the main drivers of rejection. The most common use is tacrolimus. Receive one of these drugs in the middle that they are anti-cell proliferation to prevent the immune system to proliferate and attack the organ. And receive steroids that, as we mentioned before, they are powerful anti-inflammation drugs. But there is a new regimen that combines tacrolimus or, uh, or cyclosporine with another drug called sirolimus because it is believed that they potentiate and and prevent rejection better, but also serolimus have some other effects in protection against some viral infections and also against some cancers, together with the addition of the prednisolone that uh, uh, prevents inflammation and avoiding the other drugs uh, that I mentioned before. So you just need to discuss with your doctor which regimen will be the best for your particular uh, condition. So. Let's talk briefly about potential complications of kidney transplantation. They can be divided as related to the surgery or the anesthesia, also including wound uh, problems, but can be also specific of the kidney transplant surgery per se. There could be uh, connection issues in the artery vein or ureter, either because of blockage or separation of the connections from the artery or vein that will lead to bleeding. Um, from the ureter can a uh, leakage of urine into the tummy that can be very irritative and can even uh, compromise by compression of the other organs so and maybe the surgery needs to be done and the transplant would be at risk of failure but in many occasions this can be salvable they can be related to the drugs that we are giving to to the patients uh, as I mentioned before uh, these drugs are given to to prevent the immune system to attack the organ. Uh, so therefore, they, they are prone to, to infections because the entire immune system is dampened. Um, also, they are prone to have side effects of these medications that we commented before, like diabetes, high lipids, high blood sugar. Patients taking immunosuppression are more prone to, uh, to develop cancers. So um, uh, careful surveillance is important and they can also reject and, and lose the kidney transplant. But let's talk importantly about the benefits of kidney transplantation. Indeed, patients with kidney transplant have better life expectancy, better survival than patients uh, going for dialysis. This is a, an important uh, graph. Let me go a little bit in detail through it. The black line here is the patients that continue on dialysis or for a medical reason need to remain on dialysis. The one in the middle is the patients that receive a disease donor transplant and the one on the top is the patients that receive a live donor transplant. This is time, five years, 10 years, and this is 
the percentage of how many of them are alive at these time points. So as you can see, patients receiving, uh, let's say five years, receiving a kidney transplant from a live donor, maybe over 90% of them will be alive compared to only 60%. So meaning of those remaining on dialysis. So it's a big difference. And this is more apparent if you wait for 10 years, maybe around 90 or a little bit less in this series will be alive after receiving a live donor kidney transplant, but less than 50% will be alive if remaining on dialysis. This is a huge difference. However, not only quantity of life, but quality of life is much better on kidney transplantation over dialysis. Indeed, for the freedom of dialysis, for not being, uh, not going through the process of dialysis, patients can have a better work and student life. They will have the freedom to travel, less diet and free restrictions, and many other benefits of not needing to go three times a week uh, to the dialysis center, or not be able to, not needing to do every single day the peritoneal dialysis at home. Just need to re re remind themselves to take some pills. Also, kidney transplantation is natural, not artificial like dialysis. So the kidneys not only clean the blood like the dialysis machine do, they do it also more efficiently, but also they do all the other functions that we mentioned the kidneys do, like production of erythropoietin, uh, activation of vitamin D, etc., etc. In addition, patients that undergo a kidney transplant, they are more fertile than, than patients that remain on dialysis. So family life and planning is more feasible on kidney transplantation. And overall, transplantation is cheaper than dialysis. However, uh, many governments have good subsidies for dialysis. So eventually, uh, dialysis could be cheaper because of that uh, than transplantation, but the costs are, are greater for dialysis. But that would be a cheap trade because all the benefits that I just mentioned on life expectancy and quality of life so this is an important factor that needs to be put into consideration when uh, opting for kidney transplantation or dialysis. There are many slogans uh, promoting uh, kidney transplantation. There is the gift of life. Indeed, uh, kidney transplantation um, prolongs lives more than give, give a life, prolongs lives. There is the gift of love. Actually, I quite like that because it talks about the essence of, of, of kidney donation, that indeed is a, is a gift of love, but because that slogan is already taken, so I decided to create my own that is a little more probably practical uh, on my view, a little more that you can feel and touch, that it is kidney donation holding us together for longer, basically talking about uh, the recipient and the donor and the their family, their friends, as you you will see. This plot I just already um, mentioned about it, that indeed kidney transplantation, especially life donation, gives patients greater survival. But what is important, it is that, um, I have modified just this for the purpose of, uh, of my, my, by making my, my thoughts across is like it's not only survival is you will be living together for longer than compared to dialysis as a family the family will be complete for longer the family can survive therefore for longer uh, you will regain fertility you can have more children also then you will have for longer more life experiences can also have better economy because you will be stronger and maybe able to, to, to work because you don't need to go for a part time or lose your job because you go for dialysis. And overall, you will be happier together for longer because all these benefits and many others that you can imagine. So that's why 
our center's flag on kidney donation is kidney donation holding us together for longer. You can just imagine that a husband donating the kidney to a wife is going to have simply a wife together with him for longer. To be able to give love back to him for longer time, to be able to take care of his children for longer time. If she was at home or has got also work life, contribute to the economy of the family. So the family will be united longer for longer time if the patient is to die prematurely because of hemodialysis, because the survival is greater on kidney transplantation. So this is sometimes not discussed to the patients. The, the donation is seen as a one-way uh, benefit in which the donor out of law just give the benefits, total benefits to the recipient. And it's true, it's a big sacrifice for the donor. But the donor also receives benefits because the recipient, the wife, the husband, is going to be around for longer time and they will be together for longer time. So I'm just trying to see it from the whole perspective of the family, to see donation from the whole perspective. Indeed, someone do a big sacrifice, but everyone receives benefit in different aspects and different extents. I'm stressing this because in many occasions when talking to patients or, or donors, the recipient f will feel too obliged to the donor. They will feel too worried that they would prefer not to even talk to the donor or accept the kidney of the donor because thinking that they will just receive all the benefit and it will be probably selfish from their side. And it is not both the donor and the recipient will receive a huge benefit that will be being together for longer. So I hope that this was clear and um, I hope you enjoyed this video and if so please give us thumbs up and subscribe to the channel please and stay tuned for our next video that will be how to protect your kidneys. Take care. Bye bye.